Hi everybody! Um, welcome to this attempt to make a series of videos about PHP Storm. I've been talking to a number of people about my nerdiness about PHP Storm for quite a while and um, they've said in a number of situations that I should just create a series of uh, short videos that goes over what I know about PHP Storm and how it is, how it can improve your development workflow. So here it goes. Um, actually, I'm going to start with something a little bit risky. Um, as you see on my screen here, it's just a regular Windows 7 machine. Um, I don't have any of my developer tools on it. In fact, this is a loaner laptop. And let's go through the process of going from nothing to getting your development set up so that you can work on a PHP project like Drupal. I'm a Drupal developer. Pretty much wear a Drupal shirt every day, so I'm kind of a super Drupal nerd at the nerdery. Did I mention that? I'm a nerd at the nerdery. Um, so we're going to go through some nerdy things tonight. All right. Here are some recent downloads that I've gotten in order to prep for this. What we'll go through is installing a LAMP stack. I'm going to use Acquia Dev Desktop for this. Works pretty well for Windows. I'm going to install Git for Windows and install Composer. Some of these things we'll uh, be playing with later, um, but we'll also install the latest EAP version of PHP Storm because honestly, even though you're living a little bit on the edge with the EAP versions, the early access program version, of PHP Storm, it's pretty solid. There's only been a few times in the past year or so where um, I had a rollback to the current stable version of PHP Storm. So let's start. I'll fast forward through some of these so that you don't have to watch me go through and install these. So this might be the fast forward section. Uh, also, this is a Windows laptop and also uh, very slow. So um, we'll definitely need to fast forward through these sections. All right, so I'm just going to click on through Acquia Dev Desktop. This is Acquia Dev Desktop 2. And by default, it wants to install in like atypical ports. And I know that's, that's nice, especially on a Windows laptop if you've got. Um, you know, like uh, IIS already installed, um, then you can ensure that your Acquia Dev Desktop stack doesn't compete or doesn't try to compete for port 80. That's nice, um, but I just rather not have to issue um, uh, any extra port information when I'm accessing a development web page. So I just Go ahead and switch it on over to port 80 and the regular port for um, MySQL as well. It allows me to set the defaults whenever I'm installing a Drupal site. And that just saves me a little bit of frustration. So we'll let that run. We'll also kick off the installation for Git. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I'm actually going to close this door. There we go. There we go, and now it's launched. And now I have to extend privileges to Acquia Dev Desktop so I can do its thing. And I have Acquia Dev Desktop 2 beta installed. More with that later. Um, also, I am now installing Git for Windows. You know, it's interesting. You, you just do a search for Git for Windows, and it's not this first result that you care about. In fact, tonight, for whatever reason, this web page is down. Uh, so it's the second one, this my 
or msysgit.github.io is the one if you want to get. This is how the page currently looks like. Download this one. Um, and really, the reason why we're downloading Git for Windows is, you know, one, so that we can have Git. You can install GitHub for Windows and you can have Git. But the reason, the main reason why I'm installing this version of Git is for this command prompt here. Uh, the command prompt you get with Windows is pretty bad. And you can use PowerShell, but still it's weird. Um, I'd rather have a command prompt where I can issue the Unix commands I know instead of the Windows commands I've never learned. Yeah, and here's that page broken. The first link, <laughs> Git for Windows, busted. I think they should fix that. All right, installing Git. Let's just click on through whatever, you know, one so that we can have Git. You can install GitHub for Windows and you can have Git. But the reason, the main reason why I'm installing this version of Git is for this command prompt here. Uh, the command prompt you get with Windows is pretty bad. And you can use PowerShell, but still it's weird. Um, I'd rather have a command prompt where I can issue the Unix commands I know instead of the Windows commands I've never learned. Yeah, and here's that page broken. The first link, <laughs> Git for Windows, busted. I think they should fix that. All right, installing Git. Let's just click on through, whatever the defaults are. You know, the typical installation always asks this question, do you want to use Git from Git Bash only? I just, I'm not even reading this. <laughs> just, just clicking on through. That last one was kind of important, being able to use Unix line endings. And we'll let the fast forward, fast forward. Fast forward, fast forward. Don't see the release notes, and boom, we got that done. And last, before we get the PHP Storm going, is to install Composer. Um, I like having it on the command line basis, and so they provide this um, Git for Windows, I mean, Composer for Windows setup, so I just like using that. Um, this is kind of, I don't quite remember getting this prompt before where it's asking where is your PHP located. And now that I have installed Acquia Dev Desktop, I can tell it where um, that version, the PHP that came along with it is located. So in the um, C drive for, for Windows, this is a Windows specific thing here. I know the Unix has a different um, way of addressing different command line structures, but um, oops, wrong one. Program files, and then there should be a dev desktop. There it is. And then it installed three versions of PHP. Um, Drupal 8 uses, uh, by at minimum, PHP 5.4. So let's use that one. Here we go. Composer is already installed. Oh, that's nice. Aqua Dev Desktop has Composer going on for it already. Okay. Didn't know that. So, all those things installed, I should now have my Git Bash. Boom, there's my Git Bash, which I immediately pin and move on over to second position. Hey, here's a fun tip about Windows. If you press the Windows button and a number, those numbers correspond to where the, these icons are located. So if I press Windows 2, I open the command prompt. Fun fact. So now I'm going to install PHP Storm and kick that off. 
this is a Windows machine. I actually did click this link, so I do have to wait for it. There it is. Okay, gonna run and just click on through. 8.02, hey, I want these file associations to be respected. So I'm gonna add those, and I'm gonna install and get that going. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. I'm gonna run that. And now let's get PHP set a storm set up, looking nice. Don't have a v, uh, previous version of PHP Storm installed, so. Oh, this is right away. This is something new in 8. Um, you're able to just buy PHP Storm straight from here. Um, I'm going to have to edit this portion out because I'm actually going to use my key here. Now we're at the license agreement. Right before this screen, we had the option of um, starting a 30-day trial or... Um, Adding, adding your, your security key that authorizes your use of the application. So we're going to go ahead and um, allow access, the privilege, extra privileges to PHP Storm, so we can do things like um, access your um, access your your databases and other network calls, so that it can be whitelisted on your firewall. I registered my copy because, um, yeah, I own a copy. Um, and then, you know, just kind of a stylistic thing. A lot of people like the the dark theme. There's a theme called Darkula, and I like using that one. So I'm just going to go ahead, select the dark theme, click OK, and that will require me to restart PHP Storm. But it, you know, it. It does a pretty good job of restarting pretty quickly for small changes like that. So boom! Here's Darkula, the darker theme. And it um, says that I'm using version 8.02. And it's pretty much installed now. So let's get a copy of Drupal 8 and get PHP Storm set up so that it understands more about the code. All right, I'm going to minimize that. I'm going to go to Drupal. I'm going to go to the download section. Um, and if you're going to get Drupal 8 right now, you have to go to um, drupal.org slash project slash Drupal. And what I'm expecting to see is, ah, here it is, the version control local task. And then I can copy this part of the instructions. There we go. Copy that. And then I'm going to go to my git bash. And where am I? Present work directory. OK, I'm in the uh, folder directory. So I like setting up a sites directory. What? Oh. Aqua Dev Desktop already created sites for me, so I'll go into that. There we go. And this is where I will get... There we go. And this is just something I like to do. I like putting the Drupal into a directory called D8 because maybe I'll want to have a separate... Um, directory that has the Drupal 7 code, or the Drupal 6 code. And now it's going to spend <laughs> another five minutes um, getting the source code for Drupal 8 and all of the changes that it's gone through. So we'll fast forward through this as well. All right. So now it's done. And now I'm going to get PHP Storm to access it. So I go to open from the, um, the window, the PHP Storm window, and I just open the directory. That's it. There we are in sites. Hey, fun fact, I can always click home, and then I'm always in this home directory, the, the Windows user directory that I'm in. And then I can go to sites, and the D8, and OK. So it's going to open PHP Storm, 
And we see at the bottom here that um, it has immediately started scanning and indexing uh, the entire code base. What it's doing is it's parsing the code and creating a database of um, all the functions and all the classes and all the objects so that it can improve its search capability um, when, you're, when you're developing, when you're working with the code. A lot of IDEs do this. Um, and it's actually become quite commonplace of a, of a modern IDE. So I got a couple of prompts I should take a look at there. So here's my event log. I clicked this uh, exclamation point in the lower right-hand corner, and I see that it is telling me that sometimes Windows likes to <laughs> screw with you. <laughs> And if you want to uh, make sure that the firewall is set up, uh, you can fix the problem. Well, if it's not a problem, it's not a problem. I'm not going to deal with it. And then it's some extra tool tips to help me walk through setting things up. One of the things I like to do is just click this icon in the lower left, and then all those things that show up in this like um, menu automatically show up at the bottom. And that's kind of nice because it shows you these little tips like you can press um, alt 9 and get directly to your git log we'll we'll get into more of that late, late, later and we all see other things that are helpful like the terminal we'll definitely talk about that later so now the scanning is all done and I've got a Drupal 8 code base um, and what's next oh let's let's set up PHP storm so that it knows more about Drupal. Um, one of the things that you might not know about is that PHP Storm has a Drupal integration. So if I open the settings, which you can do at any time on a Windows machine by pressing Control Alt S, there's also there are shortcuts for everything, um, and you can search them and we'll we'll get into in another talk how to find the different keyboard shortcuts and how to how to memorize them. Um, so here in the settings, we can just type Drupal. And instead of seeing a sea of different settings, we can just zero in on the specific setting. So there's actually a Drupal project setting and we can click enable Drupal integration. And then it asks us to choose a version, let's pick 8. It already understands about Drupal 8. And then we can click Apply. I probably should have clicked OK. So it came up with these um, additional settings that we could set, like do I want to set Drupal uh, specific format settings? Yes, I do. Um, I'm also, because it understands that the Drupal 8 code base that I have is a is a Git repository. It asks me if I want to add these bookkeeping files that it's making to the Git repository. And I don't want to add them. And in fact, I, I don't want it to automatically add anything to my Git directory. So I'm going to say, hey, don't ask me this again. And remember, I don't want to add stuff to my Git repository. So I'm going to click the check marks that says, don't do that, and click Cancel. So. Here I am the format settings, and it has applied the Drupal-specific format settings. So it knows that if I want to indent something, that's going to be two spaces, not a tab, spaces. And that every other indent after that's going to be two spaces. Also understands things like how I want to wrap um, specific functions, like making sure that when I have arguments that it doesn't wrap to, the, to underneath the word function, it respects the start of the parentheses and continues that way. And if I continue to enter after each parameter in a function, that it will continue to um, align the different parameters of a function. Things like that are really awesome. And making sure that when I'm creating a, a doc block, a PHP, a PHP code doc that um, it respects um, different parameters. And actually, this is a little bit wrong. I wonder if I could fix this. 
blank lines or round parameters. No. 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 Yes, I definitely want to wrap long lines. Other. Okay, edit that out. And okay. So I've got a, I've got a lot of the formatting settings applied. I'm just going to click OK. There was another thing that came up that I didn't get a chance to respond to. I can always access everything that pops up in the event log. And so I can say, here we are. This is the one. Drupal support. Do I want to tell PHPStorm that anything that is a dot .theme, a dot .profile, a dot .install, or a dot .test are PHP files? Yes. Yes, I do. So now I don't have to set that up. And I can look at uh, my code directory. So in the next talk, I'll talk about poking around the Drupal repository. We'll talk about the file structure. And we'll talk about how to find things. Thank you for watching.